but JFK in particular. So they call me, a lot of good people call me, people that I, you know, that you would find reasonable people. And they asked me not to do it. So I said, well, we'll close it for another time. But if I win, I'm going to open them up. I'm just going to open enough Why time. Why didn't you open it up the first time? Because though? a lot was, of times, the hesitation, uh, addresses, people that are still living, there are people that are affected. Um, and there could be some national security reason that for, you know, that I don't have to necessarily know about. God. After, and I did open them, but I was asked by some people not to open them. There's a Martin Luther King file too, by the way, that they'd like to see. I don't know if you know, but there is that. Welcome back to the Underground Network, where we discuss nuances of society, race, and culture, and we try to have fun doing it. I'm your host, Merck. That was a conversation that Joe Rogan recently had with former President Trump, and they discussed different issues. It was a good interview, or a conversation, how Joe Rogan likes to call it. And that was a clip for what I thought was one of the most interesting parts of the interview. And he later on segue into different parts of declassifying UFO information. Now, in reference to JFK and Martin Luther King, he kind of skimmed over to and then kind of segued into the UFO declassification thing. He said uh, that there possibly may be implications of homeland security and people that may be still living. Now, as far as my research is concerned, there's no statute of limitations for prosecution for murder and assassination. So are we talking victims here? Or are we talking people that are part of like black bag, uh, assailants that are attached to government wet workers it's a good question what of it did you read into uh, I, I think it's going to be just fine to open it let me put it that way i think it's fine it's going to be time it's a cleansing you know it's really a cleansing so i'm going to do it i'm going to do it immediately almost immediately upon entering office who killed kennedy that's one of those topics that are highly discussed among different communities and I'm sure a lot of people definitely will want to know who killed them if it's already not already solved. But in reference to Martin Luther King, it's a lot of different aspects of that conversation that has not really been discussed and not been explored as to why he has a file on Martin Luther King. That's my peak of concern. In 1968, Martin Luther King was gunned down by a brutal assassin. His life cut short at the age of 39. And from what I see, a lot of political parties and media love to use the man as a scapegoat. Dr. King, teach us something now. By Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The words of Dr. King. By Dr. Martin Luther King. And a bust of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. All three fought for freedom, understood the power of words. And I had two heroes, Bobby Kennedy. I admired John Kennedy, but I could never picture him at my kitchen table. But I could Bobby and no malarkey, Dr. King, Dr. King. I believe that Gun Appreciation Day honors the legacy of Dr. King. What must Martin Luther King be thinking as he spins in his grave? If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, this is Martin Luther King on steroids, okay? Now, I told that, I told that, I think you're better than Martin Luther King. I think you are Martin Luther King times two. And he looked at me, and I wasn't sure, was he angry because that's a terrible thing to say, or was he complimented? I have never figured it out. All the previous evidence that we know all pointed to James Earl Ray at 6.01 p.m. Uh, Thursday, April 4th in 1968 in Lorraine Motel in Memphis. But why this file is on President Trump's desk when he was in office and he promises to declassify is another peak of interest. If there was one place where I could go in a time machine, just peak for like an hour, just look around and then come back to present day, that, I think that would be the spot. I'd want to see what Egypt was like when they were building the pyramids, like in the middle of construction when they were at their peak, when they were building the Great Pyramid of Giza. Like, what was society like? Like, what were the people like? If you could just be a fly on the wall. 
I'd go back to the J. I'd, I'd be on the grassy knoll that day, JFK. Oh yeah, that's a good Dallas. one too. I would, good I just, just would you the, be on the grassy knoll or would you be in the book depository? See, if you're in the book depository, then you know that Lee Harvey Oswald isn't there. I think he may have even been there. I think he may have even been firing. Yeah, I know there's a fascination with the grassy knoll and that conspiracy and everything. But when Joe said that he was interested in learning about the teachings of ancient Kemet and the construction of the pyramids, I was inspired and I was impressed by that. And then you have Tony Hinchcliffe, on the other hand. He's more interested in seeing how a guy got his head blown off. I'm just saying. I'm sure everybody has their reasons for wanting to know a thing in reference to these conspiracies, maybe for water cooler banter or whatever, what not. But in reference to Martin Luther King, black folks need to know what happened. We have a connection with this movement. We're not trying to minimize anybody's assassination or any, minimize any victim's pain in reference to their loved ones losing their life violently. There's been several assassination attempts on U.S. presidents, and yet America will never stop to elect one. But in reference to black leaders, the trauma of every black leader being assassinated and I mean every significant person in the black community that had a potential voice to elevate black people has been terminated. So family, unlike a US president, these seats in the black community leadership remain unfilled. And it brings that paralyzing trauma that I talked about to anybody that's considering to walk on that path to activate and elevate. I'd be on the grassy knoll. You see, you see, see? See, this is part of that intellectual disconnect. But if we connect those, a lot of people can understand culture a lot better. Whether this side or that side. I'd be on the grassy knoll. I know it's a lot of people that are fascinated, like I said, with the babushka lady, and maybe even a lot more people that are fascinated with aliens. It's that big old fat distraction and misdirection that throws so many people off. And shout out to the sci-fi conspiracy geeks that would definitely like to learn more about the UFO declassification than getting some justice delivered to the families of those men who were assassinated and getting some justice that's been way past due. It's Merck, your Negro administrator. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you never miss a video, and we out.